Well, there's no question that our infrastructure is a very vital issue. It definitely impacts companies coming to your business. I mean, you know, to your area to, to bring their business. And in fact, I was at uh, Spring Hill and there was a company that had got down to two finalists, one from Georgia and one was Louisiana. And the tiebreaker was the fact that 371 from Dixie Inn to Spring Hill had passing lanes and was not four lane. And they were going to have to, you know, downshift and upshift. And they figured over a 10 year period that Georgia was the best deal for location. What was provided there was basically 10 years tax free, a facility that was already built that they could go into and everything measured up equally between us and uh, Georgia. And Georgia won that particular one because of uh, the road. And of course, that's not addressing all the other issues associated with the roads either, your, your infrastructure, your bridges and all. And I'm hoping, and one of the things I'm going to push for out in the rural area, because you have to understand District 36 is rural, it has a lot of old timey bridges. And back when I was a kid, I think it was just kind of chic, and the only thing they thought about doing was building bridges, no matter how big the stream was. And we know now that a much cheaper, more economical methodology can be done with large uh, culverts and things like this. And so I'm thinking that's one way that we can address future cost and also future repair of some of the bridges because probably the number one call that we get at our office is probably dissatisfied uh, constituency having to be rerouted uh, off Sligo and all the other roads in, you know, in South Bossier. And I'm sure the same thing is true because my hometown is Shongaloo, which is one of the districts, uh, is in that district. And they're redoing the Indian Creek Bridge now. And so th those things, uh, you know, you, one thing that really hurts when you're having that type of melee is the rerouting of buses and school children, which then affects thousands of people in terms of where they're gonna be that day in terms of getting their kids to school maybe going back and getting them because what would normally almost within vision of a, of a school, you might have a 30 or 40 minute trip there. So, you know, one of the things we looked at in this last session that we looked at was also uh, some type of a gasoline tax to be put forward to, to help fund it. Uh, I believe the tax was 20% and it was brought to, uh, it was brought to the house by St. Germain, who was the uh, chair of it. And you look at it when, that, when petroleum or gasoline is like three and four and five dollars, that's about all we can, you know, we can hack in terms of paying for it. But right now at a dollar 85 or a dollar 92, uh, a 20 cent tax would be, you know, pr pretty easy. And the key thing about it is if we do that though, that fund is going to have to be protected and not be swept. Because all I can tell you is, humbly, I knew how the last session was going to end before I got down there. And it kind of broke my heart because you had to have a balanced budget and there was only one or two ways of getting there. And that's, you know, that was it. So basically, and obviously probably one of our biggest needs is transportation and I'm glad you all addressed that because that's, that's what attracts people and keeps people.